What's up, YouTube? Deadpool 2323 back at you. Uh, yeah, doing a little face front, huh? But uh, this is my top 20 uh, cover tag videos. Uh, I don't know that it's my top 20 ever. But uh, I've watched a lot of the videos. Great videos, by the way. A shout out to the whole community. Um, and... I decided to go with just some different covers that didn't get shown. Because who wants to watch videos of the same books over and over again? So some of the books you'll see in other videos because I just love them that much. But, but some of the books, um, some of the books uh, are a little bit, uh, you probably haven't seen so much. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. So the first book uh, is my my only 9.8 uh, slab book. It's uh, Iron Fist number one. It's the Mike Perkins, uh, I believe it's the 1 in 25 variant. Um, signed by Mike Perkins. Uh, really good guy. Um, someday I hope to interview him. But uh, yeah, really, really, I love that cover. Um, and it was the first time I ever used CGC, so uh, I wasn't happy with what CBCS was doing. They took forever, and uh, I didn't like uh, what was going on with them. So I switched to CGC, and I've been very happy since. Um, and and I, again, I had no issues with the grading, just they, they take a long time at CBCS. So uh, CGC seemed to be a little quicker, and you know, maybe... Maybe down the line, CBC will get better. I don't know. But right now, I'm, I'm sticking with CGC. The next book. Uh, these are my only two slab books. Um, Captain America, number 109. Uh, classic cover. Uh, just the way... And this is autographed by Stan Lee. Um, it, what was nice is uh, we have a guy here called... Um, <clears throat> uh, agents of slabs in Tampa, Florida. And if you contact them, um, he, he'll, he'll take your, your book. He'll get it, uh, pressed. He'll charge you 10 bucks to press it, 10 bucks to clean it if it needs to be clean. And then he, uh, he'll get it, you know, CGC graded. But it, I didn't have the time to go get this signed by Stanley. I was going to the event, but I didn't want to wait in line for five hours because that's about what it takes. So I paid him. I think uh, Stanley was charging 120 for the autograph. I got it pressed and cleaned, so that was 150. I'm sorry, 140. And then uh, I think he charged me another 80, uh, which CB, you know, and that was his fee to. And I didn't, I didn't have a problem with that. Uh, so I thought, you know, that that wasn't bad. I, I want to say 80 sounds like yeah, because it was 220 dollars out the door. So. And I, I was okay with that. This was a uh, this particular book was a gift from my wife for Christmas. Uh, Stan Lee wrote this story. Uh, it's one of my favorite covers. When I think of Stan Lee, I think of Captain America. It's where really he got uh, his his start in the comic industry. So that that's why I wanted this book signed by Stan Lee. But uh, great cover. The newspaper blasting out of the newspaper. It just speaks to Silver Age to me. I, I love this cover. All right. <clears throat> the rest of these books, uh, some of these books are a big key, some of these books are not. Um, I just happen to like the cover. Daredevil number 189. I don't know why, but that yellow cover with the. I, something about Daredevil and yellow covers I like, as you're going to see in the next one. But, uh, and then, and, uh, this, you can see up here, you can see I have Stanley autographed this to the Death of Electric. Again, Daredevil yellow cover. I love, uh, Daredevil in yellow covers. So, um, Daredevil number 100. Um, for me, this is one of the best Daredevil covers there is. Uh, the, the way the, the background is. Um, you know, I apologize. Normally I do a little more research. I'm kind of doing this on the fly because I'm kind of limited on time and I really wanted to get this done. Um, 
So uh, I don't know who did the cover, and that's my bad, but still, gorgeous cover. Here's a cover uh, I haven't seen in anyone else's videos. Uh, probably was in someone's. There's enough videos out there, but uh, I love this cover, and I, I, I just maybe because it's it's just so unique. Uh, Black Panther, the Man Without Fear, Fear itself, number five twenty one. Uh, it's Black Panther, the Man Without Fear, so a, almost like Daredevil, in a Captain America suit. And for whatever reason, I just think it looks badass. Um, so, yeah. One of my all-time favorite covers, this one I know, is John Byrne. Um, Y'all know I'm a big X-Man fan. But uh, this is probably my favorite cover by John Byrne. Uh, Uncanny X-Men number 114. I love the ghost figures in the background behind Beast and, and, and Jean Grey and uh, Professor X. You know, during this one, he thinks they're all dead. So, uh, yeah. And actually, they were, um, I don't remember where they were. But, yeah, great, great cover. John Byrne's one of the best artists out there. Now, if you, if you know me, you know that I'm, I'm a... Uh, I, here's another book that I, I just, I love the cover. Um, I met the artist, the real nice guy, signed some stuff for me. Um, didn't have this book with me because I didn't realize he was going to be at the con. Um, if I'm, if I ever get a chance, I'll have him sign. This is my favorite cover by him. Uh, Zach, um, did this, uh, Web of Spider-Man 32. I just love how he's, I, I mean, just such a detailed cover, you know? And, uh, Yeah. What, it's a pretty high grade book too. Uh, not too bad. Corners are sharp. Man, it's beautiful. All right, this was in one of my recent haul videos. Um, I had never really <clears throat> not a Fantastic Four fan. This book's not in the best of condition. Real quick, I want to touch on that. So, like Amazing Spider-Man number fifty is probably one of my top three all-time favorite covers. I own the book. It's in horrible condition. It doesn't present well. So I didn't want to show it in this video. Um, but anyways, going on to this one, this is Fantastic Four number 39. Uh, you know, that's classic Kirby right there. I would imagine that's Kirby. But uh, uh, I love the way Doom is over, is just looking over. He's so ominous behind him, like they don't even realize he's there, you know. And uh, question for you, because I don't read Fantastic Four. Let's get a little closer. Uh, this way. Who's the guy behind, right there? Who's that guy? I have no idea. But, you know, you got Storm, Thing, Sue Storm. It's fantastic. Daredevil. And Daredevil's pretty cool, too. I like stories where they cross over and stuff. So, pretty cool. <clears throat> All right. So, you know, I'm a big Storenko fan. And, uh... This next book, to me, um, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number three, uh, is one of his better works. Now, he's got some great covers in that run. Don't get me wrong. I could have shown most of them, most of his great covers from that run. Uh, I don't have the whole run yet. Gonna, I will one day. Um, but this book right here, uh, I love it. Um, man, that Mylar is really shiny, huh? But... uh. Yeah, I just think it's beautiful. I don't know why, it just speaks to me. You don't see the oranges and reds so much with the black, and you don't see that on a lot of covers, uh, I think. I like the ghost look of, of Nick Fury's head, and then the, the hound and the little girl, it's, uh, you know, in the graveyard, I don't know, it's just, I love it. I like Halloween a lot too, so it's not surprising. Uh, going back to Zach, um, he's probably most, uh, known for this book, um, Captain America Annual number eight, it's the classic fight with, uh, Captain America there, yeah, love that cover, just a cool cover, 
So, only I never un understood. Adamantium is supposed to be the toughest metal in the world. But it can't cut through Valerium, huh? All right. A uh, little story with this next book. Uh, when you talk about the black suit for Spider-Man, um, Amazing Spider-Man 252 is a great cover. Don't get me wrong. So is uh, Secret Wars number 8. Um, spectacular Spider-Man number 90 is pretty good too. But my favorite of the black suits is Marvel Team-Up Spider-Man number 141. I love the way he's swinging on the web. You got Daredevil. Yeah, I must be a sucker for everything Daredevil, right? Because he's on a lot of the covers. You got Daredevil in the background. Uh, looks like the, the um, Black Widow. But he got all these guns pointed at him and knives. And, you know, knife, knife, gun barrels. And the blue outside with the yellow circle. I don't know, man. That just speaks to me. I think this is a much cooler cover than the other ones. And I think the other ones are great covers. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Secret Wars 8, Amazing Spider-Man 252, borderline iconic covers. But I like, for me, this is the one I like. I just think it's badass. To me, it's like he's going into it. Looks like she's dodging out of the way. He's dodging away, and he's like, "Bring it on!" I, I love it. <coughs> I'm a sucker for superhero fight covers. Uh, I think this is an underrated cover. Um, Wolverine number ten. Uh, I mean, this—they're not in a superhero costume. Uh, what really speaks to me is they're just in everyday clothes. They're in the winter. And they're fighting, you know, and, 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 and these guys, you know, Wolverine and Sabretooth have a cool history. Um, if, if, if you don't know about it, look into, look into them. Some great storylines, some great fights. Um, what got me into comic book collecting was, uh, Kenny X-Men number 213, which is a, a fight, a great fight book between the two of these guys. But this book right here, I believe, is listed as their actual first ever fight. But I believe this speaks more to their origin than their first fight because this book came out in 1988 or 89. And X-Men 213, I know, was a lot earlier than that. So I'm not exactly sure, but it was the mid-80s, I believe. So, um, yeah, but I just think it's a cool cover. And again, because when, normally when you see superheroes on a cover in a fight, they're not in plain clothes like these guys, you know? And that's what, to me, speaks to me in this in this one. This is a, an iconic cover. Um, again, another John Byrne uh, iconic cover. The Uncanny X-Men number 141. The Days of Future Past cover. I mean, there's been, you know, homage after homage with this book. Uh, I, I just think that this book is awesome. And... Uh, I probably will get this particular book graded one day. It is in beautiful condition. It may come back a high nine. Um, I'm I'm probably gonna get this book graded just because I want to put it up on my wall. Uh, I plan on doing a whole slab thing back here, but this is one of my favorite covers of all time, without a doubt. And by John Byrne, um, it's close between this and 114, but but uh, this one's more iconic. Obviously, but I like 114 a lot too. So it'd be it'd be a tough choice between those two. But great cover. Um, I, I recently did a, a a video on how uh, I, I kind I kind of covers and and what makes a great cover and just a little rant video. And I I went on and and maybe some people took me a little wrong. I don't hate variants. I don't think variants are a waste of time or money. I just think variants tend to uh, well, who was it? Um, it uh, the Doom made a great point. He said, "With that this many covers coming out, all the variants, it's more likely, statistically speaking, for there to be an iconic cover." And iconic covers take time, so he's right. So you can't just say, "All right, this book came out last week; it's an iconic cover." Yeah, and it, it takes time. It's a great point he made. Great point. But I think it's getting oversaturated with covers, and so uh, I think there's not as much, I don't want to say effort, because that, that's a slap to the artist's face. Um, 
but maybe the ideas are getting oversaturated and maybe they're pressed for more time. I just don't see as many great books. But this next book could one day be an extremely hot cover down the line. It was a variant. It was the Astonishing ant Man number 10, the Death of X variant. And I'm telling you, this is one of the hottest covers I've seen come out in the last five years. Um, and I'm not saying there hasn't been other great covers, but for me, man, this of the, the Death of X, this was the best one. It wasn't even close. Like there were some great I collected all those Death of X variants. Um and there were some some good cover. This one was phenomenal. I just love it. I think it's a great cover. It was really hot for a while. It's probably calmed down. You could probably pick them up cheap. You might even find them in dollar bins. I don't know. Uh it was it was commanding, you know, twenty, thirty bucks at one time. But I, I just think this this is beautiful. Uh, speaking of variants, a variant that I absolutely love, I picked up for $15, uh, and was a steal at that, um, Deadpool versus X-Force, number one, the J. Scott Campbell variant, uh, being that all of these characters on this side in here are the characters that I grew up reading and loving and, you know, was invested into their storylines, um, I just fell in love with this and didn't want to pay the $100 price tag that was everywhere else. And when I found this, um, I couldn't couldn't turn it down. Uh, I'd love to get J. Scott Campbell to sign it and get it graded and uh, put it on my wall one day. But uh, that's if I can, you know, get to an event where J. Scott Campbell will be at. <clears throat> the one event he was at that I was going to, um, he uh, was only there one day, not the day I went. Uh, this book really speaks to me. Um, Diana Prince, Wonder Woman, number uh, 200. Uh, it's one of the uh, bondage covers. Um, I do like the bondage covers, but they're creepy to me. They're almost like a horror vibe. I mean, look at that lady coming in. Like, you know, that's a, that's not a bondage, like, sexual. That's a, that's a, that's a horror cover. And, uh, and I don't know, man. I, I just, it, it spoke to me. I, I, I think it's cool. I like to collect the old Wonder Woman. I don't know why I don't read Wonder Woman, but out of all the DC movies, it was the only one that I thought was on the level of the Marvel movies. Um, no offense to anyone who likes the DC movies. I mean, we all have our own taste. But for me, Wonder Woman is uh, where it's at in the DC universe. And uh, I don't know, this was probably my second favorite Wonder Woman cover ever. My favorite Wonder Woman cover ever is this one. Adam Hughes, the great Adam Hughes, number Wonder Woman number one eighty four, uh, picked this up in an estate sale. Um, I want to say I paid thirty five bucks for it or something like that. Uh, got a freaking killer steal on it, uh, and and this is one of two Adam Hughes books that I will get signed and uh, graded one day. The other being Fairest number three. Uh, picked it up in a haul. I didn't want to show it because I haven't shown it in a haul video, but um, yeah. Great cover. All right. Down to my last three books. And these are probably my three favorite covers that I own uh, in the condition that they're in. If, if I had Amazing Spider-Man 50 in a high grader, it'd be number probably number three. Um, but uh, So the the rest weren't in any type of order. They were just some cool covers. These three are actually my, my three favorites. Um... Taz to Astonish number 93, uh, it's the Hulk and the Silver Surfer, man, I mean, the flames, the silver, the Hulk, the green, I, it just all sings to me, man, it just all sings to me, when a couple years ago, I was, I'd never seen this book, I was going through uh, comic book realm, cover by cover, and, I, and, and, you know, trying to figure out what's key about everything, and trying to, trying to do some research so that I knew what I was getting into when I would see a book, oh, I'll buy this book, because I know it's worth money. And uh, this book was worth a lot of money on Comic Book Realm. I clicked on it, and I was like, oh, my God, that cover. And the cover's why it's worth a lot of money. Um, had to have it. Went to my LCS, and they had it for 40 bucks, and psh, couldn't get the money out fast enough. Love that book. Coming in number two, I show this book as often as possible. It's a hard book to get. Uh, it's one of the books I'm most proud of in my collection um, because it is a rare book. I mean, you know, a lot of guys have it, but this, this to me, 
uh, is an iconic cover, uh, Silver Surfer number four. Now, I have a quick story about that. Let me... What I did not realize is this book has a reprint of a story in this book. However, the only difference is in this book, it's um, told by You Ought To The Watcher, where in this book it, it's not. Neat, huh? And I don't know which story it is because there's like four or five stories in here, but I just thought that was neat and thought it was something cool to, to share doing my research and came up with, I found that out and I said, oh, since I have that book, let me show it. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, you know, love superhero battles. <clears throat> I don't think, I think I've been over that time and time again. And, um, so that's going to be a uh, subject of my 200 contest. That's right, I'm getting ready to put out my 200 subscriber contest video. And last, but certainly not least, my absolute favorite cover at all time. I am in love with this cover. Uh, it is the picture that you see when you see me. Um, X-Men number 50, the great Stranko Polaris cover. Uh, it is um, it's a pretty good copy. I'd say it's a 6-0. 6570 somewhere in there. I want to get a better copy someday, high, high grade, but today ain't that day. So, so there it is 20 covers, uh, just over 20 minutes. Um, it's supposed to be a tag video, so I'm gonna tag a, a few YouTubers. Um, I'm gonna tag the Wilkin Dead, it's my good buddy. Uh, I'm gonna tag uh, the um. Batcave Comics. He's a, a brand new YouTuber. Um, check him out. Uh, I checked out his first haul video, and uh, I think he only has one video up. He might have a second one up now, but uh, you know, give give the new guy some love. Uh, I'm gonna tag him so he can do this tag, and uh, hopefully it uh, will help him get some some subscribers. And um, let's see who else. All the guys I watch a lot of really really uh, have have have. Um, put them out so i'm just gonna leave it at those two i'm gonna tag those two woken dead back cave comics uh if they choose to do it that'd be great um so uh don't get used to seeing my face in, in uh, my videos I, I don't i don't plan on doing this a lot looking at the camera i see a lot of the rings under my eyes and i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm just kidding but uh so like I always say, guys, uh, first, I, I just want to say thank you to the community. Uh, this is a, a great community to be a part of. Uh, I love being a part of this community. I've met a lot of great people. You know, Alex the Comic Order, Rupert Tate 728, uh, Gizmo 17, Dust, um, uh, QB Comic Addict, The Walking Jedi. Um, these are people I've actually talked to, and there's been a couple others. I've talked with Ben Crew and a couple others. Um, so I just think it's, uh, it's fantastic. This community, I love to support this community as much as I can. I'm sorry. I haven't been doing a lot of, uh, contest videos. Uh, it's, it's just with my schedule and my wife's schedule and four kids, it's tough to get time. And the only reason I have time right now is because I have my 16 year old watching my three year old. <laughs> so with the holiday vacation, I have that ability. So. But guys, collect what you like, don't apologize for it, and happy hunting, and happy Thanksgiving.